LG now, the Zinzao locked in right away. Gwen still being the other thing left open for BLG though, not gonna not gonna fall for that one. I think we did highlight Breathe has been one of the players willing to play more champions into the Gwen. He's even brought up things like the Fiora numerous times into that matchup, doesn't really care. That's going. The Akali not being left open, so one of his other potential options is gone. Lyric. Gwen's OP though. Gwen is very OP. So without the Akali there with Breathe having to pick maybe another innovative matchup. Uh, Wayward on the Gwen is something that's just so powerful. Do you get another jungler here? Do you set up support? What, what's the look? Ooh, looks like TS might be going for something a little bit different. I mean, right, th th there's so many different supports open. I think going for jungle here makes sense. I mean, both Nautilus, Leona, obviously, if you still want to engage, there's the Thresh Tom Kench with the amount of uh, prevalence we've seen him make in recent weeks. So, for TS instead wanting to get on a jungle matchup that has them comfortable and save support for second rotation. Oh, not often we see Trundle, though, but you and I have been talking about Trundle, you know, being a good response. Ooh, Ari's left yes! open. And here you go, Lyric. First one for you. Second one for me tonight, but still... Ari's a lot of fun to watch. Oh, I agree. Just, you know, again, the changes coming in. She pretty much got damage added to her kit across the board, whether it was her Q, her W, or her E, just overall. Lots of damage buffs coming in. Obviously, there were some base stat nerfs in terms of some of her healing and regen, but they just uh, made up for that with the change to her passive. Uh, killing minions, giving you the essence fragments. If you kill nine, you get a heal. If you kill an enemy champion, it also gives you a heal. Yep. Your ult also having now uh, the up to three extra charges if you're able to get those takedowns and proc that passive as well. So really fun champion. Uh, tons of different outplay potentials. Has really stepped up as one of the picks to be able to allow you to proactively work as a mid-jungle pair and, and, and look for these plays in the early and mid-game. I know how to look at her in uh, spectator mode now as well. Got a nice little tooltip above the health bar or above or below. Uh, so we'll be keeping track of that this time around. And while we have some other mid lane bands that can do well into the Ari, that you know, start building the laning phase. I like that for top esports, support that's yet to be picked up, which on Chris Thresh, taken away, take one element of strength. On the other side though, uh, Breathe with the Narp. This time around, we're gonna get a uh, Breathe on something a little bit more, what, controlling of the space. I'm mostly curious to see what Knight does pick here into the Ari, the champion just coming back in. I've always felt like Ari never had a lot of terrible lane matchups. Uh, you typically are able to, you know, at least get your wave clear off, get a bit of damage, and try and find an impact later on in skirmishes. Knight, though, going to match aggression with aggression and go towards the Vex. So for the side of top esports now, if you round out with this Leona like I'd expect them to do... Having the engage and the follow-up coming out from Mark and Knight, having a bit of zone control coming in for Tien in the jungle with the pillar and setting up for Jackie Love to be that massive backline carry threat. Okay, well, you've got yourself Vex, you get yourself Mark's Nautilus. Lyric, round this out. Crisp has so many good champions. His Leona last game, I think, is, is well worth mentioning. Yeah, it was it was great. And we even saw in the pregame interview, right? Crisp saying he feels like a lot of their strength does come down to uh, some other more tempered decision making around uh, objectives and how they are able to set up in their mid game. So this time around, gonna go on to the Rakan. You are able, you are able to be that follow up engage that Weiwei can set up, or even Breathe if he can find those massive ultimates. Which I feel like Breathe has had some pretty solid NAR performances uh, so far. Yep. Has pulled that one out twice. I remember one where he did get a really solid. It was either a four man or five man uh, NAR ultimate up towards that Baron. So for Breathe, going to be looking out at that one. Some side lane possibilities coming out from both sides. I think for BLG, it definitely being a bit stronger, having not only NAR, but the Ari in the mid lane as well. Can set you up for uh, situations where you can get 1-3-1s, look to move first, set up these picks. For the side of TS, I think once again, it is very much a flavor of uh, moving as a five-man unit, trying to set up the same way they did last game. Probably going to see them run mid, look for the ARAMs all through the course of the game, but Knight having the ultimate can can look to have some presence on the map in terms of our early roams. Yeah, that level six mark, the Shadow Surge is gonna be exciting to watch. We get a Vex, we don't get a Renata, we don't get a Zeri. It's like we can only have one of the new champions, so. Um, Vex was before Zeri, wasn't she? She was. Yes. She was. Yes, she was, we you were a, correct. We've got a lot of champions being released these days, so it's kind of hard to keep track. Uh, Akshan feels like he was only four months ago, three, four months ago. So one after another, Gwen released in 2021 as well, or at the end of 2020. Uh, with these new champions and Summoner's Rift, 
Let's see how we go. Lyric, I'm going to ask you more about mid lane. Uh, I think that's my most exciting matchup here. Because seeing Ari versus Vex, a laning phase I, I don't think we'd expect to see in the near distant future. But Ari comes through once again here tonight. We're going to have to see how Fofo does on the champion. Had a really good game one on the Zoe. But now running back onto Summoner's Rift. Lyric, the Gyos, we can't hear them. But we know the audience can. It's an electrocute versus electrocute lane. What is your insight into the laning phase itself? Yeah, this isn't a matchup I've seen too much of, but from the, the few games I have seen, I feel like Vex should be able to control the wave uh, pretty early on, especially yeah. at that level 3 mark, just having more wave clear available to you. If Fofo can hit a charm, you will be able to come out with the advantageous trades, kind of, you know, for Knight controlling the wave, for Fofo looking for all-ins and kill pressure, especially at level 6, and when he picks up the Everfrost, he should always be able to find his way on top of Knight and be able to guarantee those kills. Knight, though, did take the Ignite. So Knight coming in, wanting to be the aggressor in this matchup compared to Fofo, who did bring the TP. So not only for the lane, but that's going to be very significant for BLG overall in terms of their map movements, right? Always uh, potentially going to be able to have a man advantage if they are looking to go set up in those side lanes later on. Pull someone like Knight into a side to answer, and then bam, he can't follow up. You have two members of BLG who are able to TP in and win out on the play. And so coming back to top esports a little bit as well, outside of just a mid lane matchup, uh, it does feel like, you know, Knight might have to deal with the pressure of Weiwei here in the early game, where you have Charm, where you have Audacious Charge, a lot of locking potential that, you know, Flash only comes up every five minutes. Yeah, and especially in terms of mid jungle 2v2s, right? BLG is, I think, definitely being the more aggressive side of that one, having the setup in both mid and jungle and both bringing damage to Tian, who sure, I mean, you're going to have some damage, especially early on. Also taking the PTA, which is much better in terms of early ganks yep. and the damage you're able to set up for your counterpart as well, but mostly going to be there to find the pillar and set up for Knight to be the one to dish out the damage himself. I hope at the very least we get a much faster early game this time around. Uh, game number one was slow ticking. We had four kills by the 25 minute mark. It didn't suit top esports. At least this time around, Lyric, like the way you speak of, you know, ultimate usage and uh, top esports around these first couple of neutrals. Excited to see what Knight can do. Excited to see what Tien can do with the PTA Trundle as well. Ejaculate uh, putting a deep ward, trying to spot out where Weiwei is. There's no camp there, so obvious passing towards the top side while Tien is swapping himself going to the spot. Yeah, so for TS, once again, trying to set up more towards this bottom lane. The first two series we saw Wayward come in, it was a lot about giving up pressure towards that top side, but since then it has mostly been setting up towards this bottom side and just enabling the aggression to come out from Mark and Jackie Love. I think it makes sense Gwen going to do quite well in this matchup on top lane. Stretch one. Just a bit of a trade. Remember though, Severum, you ignited Doggo, but Doggo has his turret right there. Jackie Love walking up. He'll be able to get away after burning his heal. Chris burning nothing. Was a one summoner for one summoner trade, but look, Doggo might just be forced out of this lane. Yeah, they need to be careful as well because Tien's Whoa. wrapping his way around. That was very close, getting both sums out from Doggo now. Both junglers are here. He's sticking around for it though. Doggo and Chris with a health bar disadvantage. Tien now spotted out and Weiwei paying the respect. That's turret plating. That's Chris who has to sit in the lane by himself. Doggo now leaving. Lyric in the 2v2. We talked about it opening the segment. Jackie Love Mark, doesn't matter where their jungler is, they're going to try for it. No, and I, I even really like the setup is we're going to see here to see if they go on Crisp. They opt not for it. As for TS, right, they went for that heavy trade, committing things like the Ignite to get them low because they knew TN was on this side of the map. Uh, going to be a pretty, pretty solid advantage for them in terms of them getting a plate, forcing out so many summoners in that bottom side, and then now going to be able to come to lane with a little bit of an item advantage there for Jackie Love. Uh, Jackie Love with double longsword and a dagger versus only a singular longsword for Doggo. CS is going to be the big thing we talk about in that bottom lane starting now and already going to be a great advantage that top esports can potentially play towards. Tien's still on that bottom side and uh, Breathe in the meantime having a pretty good time in this top side wave but Wayward, there's a lot to catch up on in there and I, I feel like uh, Wayward's ahead of CS by like five after picking this all up. Yeah, I mean, Wayward got the, the push in uh, for the, the first few waves, got the bounce back into turret. New jungler on the bottom half of the map. Weiwei also bailed quite early on. Just played back, let breathe, get this into turret. And like you said, going to come out not really being down in CS for the side of Wayward, even being three up. So you were close, not five, but three is uh. still 
half of a wave. That's true, dude. I'll take it. Close enough to five. Tien spotted out. Nice little ward here from Breathe on the Nah. And Dragon's up. I am went for the Herald. I'm excited for this one because, again, we'll have level six on Knight, on Fofo. Breathe as well with the Mega Nah. Wayward with the Needlework. Uh, I can just keep going, going through and labeling these big ultimates. Around these, these objectives, Lyric, uh, talk to me a little more about setup and what I should kind of be expecting in the next couple of minutes. I think for the side of TS, setup looks pretty straightforward in terms of you you yourselves, once again, not having too much engage. If you do find an opening onto a key target, right, Mark can always throw out the hook and then Vex, uh, Knight's Vex be able to follow up. But this time around, having better... I'd say disengage and zone control tools coming out from TN being on the trundle, and of course just Gwen being able to go up to the front and pop her W. So them, if they can just get a standard 5v5, I think they're feeling quite happy. Or BLG, they're going to need to be playing the flank angle, bringing in Fofo is Wayward and Breathe. A bit of trading. Wayward's still not six. Yeah, well, Breathe is, though, and he's going to use it to his advantage, but does Wayward even need it? Wait, nah, hit six, and Wayward testing it, but it is first blood over to BLG. I don't know why that was close, Lyric, but it was. Uh, yeah, Wayward finding a bit of trading before we did come up towards that top side. Is more aggression on the opposite side, though. Fofo might be found. All right, well, Spirit Rush is used by Fofo as Mark sends out the dredge line. But look at the bottom line of BLG. Once again, they might be sent packing. It's already a 23 CS lead. Two bits of Dog target play level three. over Jackie Love. And yeah, that's a low EXP dip coming through. Yeah. yeah, this is a rough one for BLG's bot lane so far. Nice of TS to use this aggression, especially as BLG have uh, committed to making plays towards the top side, knowing that they're not strong enough to answer in this 4v4 down in bottom side just yet. This should be a dragon for the side of TS, but BLG are posturing like they want to contest. Way away making his way over now. I don't think they'll get here in time. Uh, it's going to go down even on the ward. BLG have to back off, and Jacket Love puts the traps down. He gets Doggo, actually, for Mark. Flash not yet up and available, and he hasn't taken Hex Flash, so he stops right there. But Top Esports use this window to open up a jungle camp with Knight off on the wing at the ready. Yeah, big oh, point was it. Knight moving back to mid first, so he was able to get that push in. So Bofo had to go back to mid to answer the wave. Allows for this roam to come out. Now, for Tien, you have quite a few camps to catch up on in your own jungle, so probably won't see much for the next few minutes. But we come up towards topside, right? Wayward already chunking him down to half HP uh, before Breathe gets to Meganar and is able to try and threaten with this ultimate. Nice hold on the Q stacks as well to follow through. But then with Weiwei flashing in to make sure his top laner doesn't go down, everything works out for the side of BLG in regards to that top lane play. And gives the first blood over to Breathe. So top versus bot seems to be the narrative for this game, Lyric. Uh, because... He also denied uh, what seems like a decent bit of a wave now because yep. Weiwei being a bit down in CS. Yeah, so, you know, decent amount. 10 CS. Bottom side, though, the gap is a little bigger as Fofo decides it's his time to move. Knight doing the same, though, and his ulti's up and available. Fofo another 10 seconds on his own. He'll just look for the charm here. You can see already Foxfire comes through. Knight zoned away from the control ward. Lyric, I want to point out, um, we have broken timers on the gold uh, next to players. Not timers, they're actually gold. So everyone's at about 600 gold at eight and a half minutes. And there it goes. It disappeared. We'll see if we can get that working again. Yeah, for BLG. Now they're going to be able to take this Rift Herald. Top Esports still just going to like look oh the camera over their bottom Leave lane. Leave them alone. The Ignite comes down. Doggo trying to survive. Subjugation while Mark tanks it up. Jackie Love with the last piece, but he got the kill. Knight moving down as well. Crisp wants Mark with Fofo riding in. I don't know if he knows Knight's there. They get a fear of Ignite's down. Look at the damage as the Shadow Surge cleans him up and now Crisp is under turret versus four people. Quickness buys time. He turns on the Jackie Love. I respect it from Chris when he was dying anyway. I still want to say that was so well played coming out from Knight. Waits for Fofo to walk in. Doesn't throw out any abilities too early. Using the personal space to then guarantee the fear coming off. Uh, holding his ultimate as well to make sure for Fofo to get over the wall and get closer to his team. Really beautiful to see coming out from Knight. I feel like Knight's Vex has just been phenomenal in this series. In the last one, as we get into the dive, I mean, they have the wave. Their enemy jungle's up towards top side. Really having no vision either to spot out when uh, the members of PS are going to be able to move down. And then here, Fofo walking in. Bam, personal space to be able to get the fear. Throws out the Q as well. Ult had already landed. Waits for him to get over the wall to be able to guarantee that one. Then, like you said, though, Chris throwing out the ultimate to, to CC members down. 
instantly flashing onto Jackie Love. Had the ignite as well to guarantee one back and show. Hey, you know, me killing you might not do anything, but it says I'm an absolute Chad and you cannot face me as uh as I mean, Wayward. Yeah, yeah, Wayward's gonna die, but how does he die? Over to Wei Wei. And when Wayward dies to Wei Wei, we definitely know the the way BLG wanna play this game is through the top side, so. Now we're in a great position, Lyric, and Breathe has got some carrying to do alongside his jungler. As Herald gets placed down, and looks like Jackie Love and Mark want to make bot their reality as well, but I don't think they'll match first heart blood. No, they should be able to. This should be guaranteed over the side of TST and will be here to answer. You do see Top Esports' response on the bottom side of the map is having Knight hover over to at least deny uh, more minions to the side of BLG and be able to take this turret. But for BLG, they're going to be able to be able to get the second charge. At least getting some damage down. Tien stops it in his play, though. As you can see, Wayward's moving up towards top side. And Wayward's going to back away. I need to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a gold lead of absolutely zilt shit at 11 minutes into the game. A dragon over to top esports. And turret trading for turret trading. But again, Chucky Love, the Fed member, breathe the Fed member on BLG side. And I guess we've got some thinking to do, Lyric, because there's a hole breaker versus a Kraken Slayer. And I'm ready for the next Herald. I'm ready for the next Dragon. We are just going to have over-inflated members, uh, individuals that need to be focused on. But we need to remember, right, the fact that with Breathe opting into the Hallbreaker first means he's just going to be stronger in the isolated 1v1 to where Jackie Love getting the advantage from the side of PS means team fights and skirmishes is where top esports should be looking. So yep. that, that'll kind of be the difference in dichotomy right now. You do have Breathe pushing in bot side. Dragon will be up quite soon, so out maybe there. look for that as smart. Chris comes through. Chris actually going to get two-man ulti, but Knight buying his space. Look at Fofo on the top side. Tien tried to dive that, but Jackie Love and he are getting a little bit low. Four members up in this top lane. They're going to stick around for now, Lyric, but I think BLG having pretty good answers. I'm just surprised at BLG not opting into the the what should be potentially a free dragon on the opposite side of the map, wanting to cover Fofo here. Make sure the top esports don't escalate the, the gold game, which is what yep. it seems like they have been playing for. Way would mean so I'm going to clear out the wave, and you can see the Breathe is sticking around for his own bit of plating. That hole breaker early hurts so much, and they're struggling to do it. BLG making a play on the other side of the map, so... But now, Jackie Love and Mark just have to go running. You look towards mid, and Doggo is just trying to pick up some farm, get back into this game while it's top eSports who actually start up this track. Yeah, so TS, bot time, went to top first, Woo! pulled BLG up there, and then using the window while BLG are reacting to the top side play, instantly pivoting back down towards mid, push that out and guarantee themselves a dragon. So, or TS once again, potentially playing towards the win con of Soul. <laughs> Yeah. Didn't really work out for them too well last game, but PS and TS fans hoping for a better showing this time around. Still real no no real gold sway in either direction. And for BLG, you expect them to just keep opting into this map state, right? We hit on the 131, keeping Ari and, and Nara in side lanes. Should be able to win out. Maybe Knight now will be able to get the uh, better of him, considering how ahead he has gotten from this early game. But we know Breathe is so strong. And look now, Weiwei heading down towards bottom side. Chris hovering around as well. But I like the top esports are making the match move. Doggo, meanwhile, mid lane as Mark gets caught out. He flushed away. But that pillar placement, beautiful. Even Mark filtering through the depth charge on top of this jungler who's buying time. But not space as Chris gets the knock up. And Doggo finally comes in. But how much damage is he going to do with Severum? Crescendum at the ready. He flashes in. He wants the kill. But he's gone deep now. And Weiwei there to punish. Mark helping him secure. Doggo, it's time to die he takes a while but eventually it's true blg they're not stopping yet though lyric tn in some dead doo-doo and i ain't talking about the lck top laner as crisp is running through way way cares not about the turret shot with the crescent guard wind becomes lightning it's crisp who picks it up and for ts honestly not a big fan with the decision there to even try to look for the pick in the first place considering that blg I think having more members with the ability to move on this side of the map, we're gonna go straight into the replay of BLG walking in, both teams fighting over Vision right now. Both teams, four man strong on the bottom side. They feel like they can go for this because Jackie Love is able to rotate over first, but Weiwei able to mitigate so much damage with the ultimate coming through. Then it buys time for both Breathe and Doggo to be able to get here. Wayward has to keep in, was on the reset right at that time and opens up for BLG to find two kills. Wayward though coming in does set up for him to be able to take down Doggo because Doggo committed so heavily to be able to find this kill on Mark. 
for getting something, but Jacket Love just clipped from the side of the play. A uh, BLG with 1k gold lead. They might not have the objectives, but they're in front of this Herald now, ready to contest Lyric. I don't know, they've got their ulties available, and Herald's not going that fast. As Mark gets the dredge line in, Ignite down, and with 10 kills, I'm ready for some more. Making up for game number one as Weiwei starts it off on the end. Crescent Guard with the two level lead in the jungle. Weiwei having a great time as everyone falls, but look in the back line. Oh, Knight with oh, a nice. shadow surge. He's got a reset. He's got a reset. We want to see him go in. He lands on top of Fofo. Will he take it? The eye the Herald popped. It needs to go down. He's taking yet another kill. Shadow Surge was not taken and completed as he picks up his double. And when you think top esports are out, just remember that Knight exists. Yeah, Knight completely saved the day on that play. I feel like BLG found a pretty decent fight for them. But just the fact that the Shadow Surge was able to perfectly hit onto Doggo and take away the sustained DPS from the side of BLG opens up for them to come out even in that fight and actually walk away with the Rift Herald themselves. So they're going to turn this one into a mid-tier one turret. 3-0 and 1, by the way, with Ludens. Uh, Wayward going to get some gold and get past that Rift Maker as well. So Mythic's now coming out. And I'm talking about items because I was surprised the top esports were a little bit stronger than my mind led me to believe. Starts with Chris P. Lyric. Yeah, TS, the one that's trying to take this Herald. They're not expecting BLG to come in, but the TP comes out from Breathe. Knight hovering on... The backside of the fight is way away, and the rest of BLG just fall through. Leaves Doggo astray. Gets instantly bursted out. BLG trying to get as much as they can on the opposite side, though. Funnel in onto Jackie Love, and they're able to do it. But it leaves way away a bit on his loan, so I'm not wanting to commit into that choke either. And then going to walk away for a 3 for 3 as, uh, at the same time, TS were able to finish off that Rift Herald. So again, I'm going to come back to the members that I'm noticing with gold. 3, 4, and 0 in this game. The Nar side lane with Holebreaker. Very scary thought for Wayward to continue dealing with it as he goes Mega and just walks out of here. Lyric on the other side, Jackie Love, who picked up so much turret plating in the lane, who was ahead, has now been caught up, you could say, by Doggo. Uh, Doggo 1 and 3, 30 CS down, but still, it feels like he's more in this game than you'd expect after the landing phase and went so downhill. So Jackie Love caught out a couple of times in the fights, which is leveling it. And is there anywhere else, Lyric, that feels like it's an important place to touch on for this third dragon before Fofo starts knocking down Tara? Yeah, I think the most critical thing was the fact that it was been very clear for the last, like, 20 seconds that BLG weren't going to opt into the contest. They had Fofo in a side Ooh. lane. So, oh, wow! That was extremely close. Yeah, only just misses, but they're not stopping their depth charge. Get through, but Doggo ulting. That dredge line, that minion... A little bit too good here as top esports use a lot to get that pick and now move to the drag. For BLG, you're under the assumption that, uh, you know, TS make their way towards for drag. That they should know it wasn't started as shown by the vision that BLG do have down on the objective themselves. But angling for the aggressive window around mid, Mark able to find it. Doggo getting caught with his pants down. So the fact that BLG trying to opt into playing towards the top side of the map, getting a little bit exploited by TS there, considering both Fofo and Weiwei uh, decently far away from being able to help on any potential action. We've seen this a bit from Doggo, haven't we? Great games where he carries team fights and then games where teams either camp the laning phase or I think more importantly, he gets targeted out in fights and Doggo has a bit of a bad time. But here in this game, he is being channeled with negative energy. Chris, welcome to the jungle. Knight has got more than fun in game. Freeze on his way, and he's backing out. Yeah, for BLG just trying to set up to take this outer bot lane turret. You do expect both teams to start pivoting up towards topside quite soon, though, with Baron. Less than a minute till that being up is Wayward. I wonder if he's going to try and find the 1v1 pressure. Looks like he finally did go in. Of course, Ofo back is... Right as that happened, we pan back to bot side instead of looking at the potential action in top lane. Yeah, because Fofo uses ulti. That was one charge down. I saw the little timer buzz around. So Fofo not going to have that for the foreseeable future. About, what, 40, 50 seconds at this point? Uh, so not, not really long at all. So we're going to keep timing that. Uh, Lyric, we got blood this game. It's good. Uh, I was worried we are going to have a slow series with BLG and top esports. The channeling there... What do you call it? What are they channeling? Uh, they're they're fury. They're yeah. they're pissed off. Oh and my god! Yeah, you know, when when talking about like the action we've been seeing, right? Uh, for TS, I feel like a lot of their proactivity hasn't been like 
they haven't been able to find a lot of kills, even though Tez have typically been a team who still like to posture for certain plays. Uh, this time around, though, both teams able to find kills on the receiving ends of their aggression. Again, BLG, I think, doing a great job playing so heavily around Breathe. We saw two ganks from Weiwei Wei in the early game. But now, TS once again trying to be the aggressors walking yep. into the enemy jungle. We knew Baron was coming up and teams would go towards his topside. Knight looks like he's wrapping around and trying to set up for a fight. This is the dichotomy that we're going to see, right? BLG having Breathe stronger, committing two sides, having double TP. For TS, it's going to be about dropping waves, dropping sides, and trying to find potential aggression. But BLG, don't give it over. Now Wayward going to have to go and answer that push by Breathe. There he is. Uh, breathe, 200 CS, by the way, at 20 minutes. So keeping with the clock. Not doing the same here in the mid lane. This is Tony Salgas, though, and I'm pretty scared of Knight being able to buy time and space, literally, within these fights. We've got two items coming out for practically everyone on Summoner's Rift with a Banshee second here for Fofo Lyric. Uh, so that Ari yeah, able to survive Knight and, you know, maybe dissuade the fear for now. You know, what? when I when I look at these teams, when I look at top esports, a team who needs this win so badly, they've struggled so much early part of the split, sitting at six and four right now. If they win this series somehow, they make their way up tied with EDG, tied with BLG, tied with LNG, tied with RNG, all the Gs top esports are tied with. Oh, good point. And they'll have to head to head against BLG if it ever comes to that, so. Kind of a, a series that will linger on in the back of their minds is I'm not done casting this one for now because it feels like top esports climbing back into gold. They're going to get their third turret of the game. They're down only by a thousand now. And remember that top esports, despite it being a cloud soul, still have soul point in the back of their pocket. So Lyric in a minute 20. Looks like BLG are going to be looking to fight this one. And I, I'm ready to see Fofo pick an angle. Yeah, Fofo now sitting on two items, has the Banshee build complete, completed. Seems like he's paying a lot of respect to that Shadow Surge ability uh, to be able to come out from Knight. We look around at, at other items. Jackie Love having a bit of an advantage on Doggo on the opposite side. Not too surprising, right? You look at the massive CS advantage and how heavily Doggo was targeted. Still not able to finish out up that Lord Dominix just yet. So TS having some obvious power in certain places, but Breathe right now, I feel like will just be so hard to take down in these fights is starting to make his way towards his next item. Got a Blighting Jewel here for Knight. Blighting Jewel is going to turn into a Void Staff. Eight stacks of the Dark Seal. And Knight this split better be the Magi's person. Breathe caught out, Depth Charge. He can't hop away, it was interrupted. Breathe was interrupted and top esports are so sneaky. Now Top Esports having full control over Dragon. BLG still posturing like they have the ability to take it. I mean, you really can't opt into getting too much on the opposite side of the map, right? Uh, you don't have too many jungle camps left available. Your wave is pushed pretty much to their inhibitor, so not going to want to go and push out that one. You can take away the one or two wards that TS has, as we see Chris doing now, but ultimately that pick just leading to BLG not being able to find tempo, find CS, find XP on the map anywhere. But to be fair... We know that this game will also be decided by a burger flip, don't we? That this game will act like game number one lyric and what happened in game one. Why why can't we flip pizzas? Huh? Well, it's not as exciting. I think it looks much cooler. It's much but it's much more visually pleasing to see someone flip a pizza. Well, because I guess it makes sense. So when you actually it's more exciting. Because it can go wrong, right? Yes, it can go horribly wrong. But You've seen those funny videos of people flipping pizzas. It ends up on their face. It ends up on, on their wife's face, their husband's face. It ends up somewhere. It ends up on someone that pisses yeah. someone off. You get to a fist fight afterwards because you threw a pizza on someone. <laughs> and you know oh, what? Geez. Then you're also left just giving free food to the customers because now now you're taking an extra like 20 minutes to get them their pizza. Oh my lord, I can't keep up with that. Have I sold you? Have I sold you on it? Yeah, maybe you have. So we're flipping pizzas then at this game. Um, I'll stick with you for now. I guess burgers are tastier. Doggo taking damage from Jackie Love. Look at PLG though. They're grouped up and they're moving into a pretty dangerous position. Breathe with a flanking angle. He wants it as Tien subjugates. PLG literally just walked at them, tried to force a play, and Wayward didn't TP, so he's just going to split push into the base. Especially forcing a fight through that choke point specifically because we saw Tien's trundle pillar almost able to cut off the whole choke point, so you're not going to be able to find a way to... to Force your way under their turret from there. 
Uh, for, for Breathe, he really wanted to try and find an angle on the flank. He was just about to be Meganar. Could have potentially hit a three or four man ultimate. But again, the other members not being able to walk forward really stops that play from being able to come through. And so we're back to lulling about for the time being. Excuse me, by the way. You know, your pizza analogy is great. Do you reckon it's burgers because League of Legends started? Well, okay. Maybe I, I stopped that listen, sentence. Listen, listen. Stop the sentence. Ox, Ox just pinged me and said it can't be pizzas because pizzas aren't on the McDonald's menu. Oh. That is not That is not a problem with pizzas. That is a problem with McDonald's oh, menu. Oh, yeah. There you go. Let's attack the billion there dollar corporation. <laughs> Let's go, no dude. No one... No one is safe here. It's BLG. No, safe Mark's either. not. He's the one who's taking damage. Ignite goes down. Crisp again. Looks like a nice little pick of Shirelia's was burnt. A lot of items burnt immediately as well. As Breathe with no Mega Narbar. Top Esports getting frisky in the enemy jungle. And BLG sticking as a five-man unit waiting for the next bait they can catch. And Bofo wants the charm on Tien. He finds it. Chris with the engage mark with the dredge line. Chris getting burnt down. But again, Tien the target. The Jacqueline takes him down. Look at the positioning as Breathe wants to ult him. He gets the 80 carries. Doggo jumps on in. But Wayward deals with him in a quick manner. BLG baked it in as Gwen still exists in the game. And I mean, I just can't believe Chris got taken down so early. He pretty much got almost killed from over the Raptor wall. By that point, the other members of BLG trying to just very forcefully get their win, get taken down. And now for the side of top esports, gonna guarantee themselves a Baron. You know, Hysterics, it looks like a potential game three is on the horizon. Yes, it is. There ain't gonna be no flipping here with no enemy jungle top esports, it's theirs and Baron buff, it's 5k gold leader, 26 minutes in the game. Let's replay again, because there's a lot of moving parts to this one. Yeah, we're gonna see here, Tien getting charmed. Chris taking a ton of damage before he does go back over the wall. And then we see just multiple members funneling into TS. You're actually specifically funneling into the Gwen. He was getting off so much damage there. I feel like even Knight, not, not finding the biggest impact, it was BLG literally what? running straight into the Gwen, right as he was able to get the snips and the ultimate off. Fofo in that fight, no offense, that was not Fofo's best fight. <laughs> that was definitely not a great fight for the RE. That Everfrost was just the wrong way. So, a little bit unfortunate. Pressured by Wayward chasing him. And uh, I've definitely seen better fights from Fofo, so... Unfortunate is, is the word I'm going to stick with. So, top esports lyric, they have a Baron. They've got a 5k gold lead. They've got Ocean Soul. And with You're Tien... You're a full up on AD carry. Tien can subjugate and he's going to chase it down. <laughs> Oh my god, where did Wei Wei go? Teleport coming through, breathe the ulti, it's two man Chris. Layers down, Doggo this time with the Infernum. Trying to buy his own space, but look at Wayward with the needlework. He's following easily. <laughs> He's running through and not dying anytime soon. Knight doing the same, and top esports ready to take us to another game. Yeah, Jackie Love might have gone down, but that top esports don't need Jackie Love at this point. You have two massive damage dealers in both top and mid, even Tien at this point quite a sizable threat and for top esports you're just going to keep funneling through you have 20 seconds left on top and 80 carry by the magic words we're getting nexus turrets being destroyed in game three between blg and top esports is where we're going to end our night oh, no pizzas were flipped in this match uh -huh. it's uh great to see top esports able to find a bit of momentum coming through, especially around a lot of these objectives, or being able to to force BLG away from being able to make the play they wanted, right? I'm specifically thinking of that play in mid, where it's like, hey, Wayward split pushing getting so much on the